Well, this conference is unique in that it's, it's every four years, it's a big thing, and it brings together scientists from all over the world in pretty large concentrations. I have a meeting like this with whatever it is, over 1,500 people from all over the world sharing experiences and ideas, um, I think is, is a really unique opportunity. And in particular, being held here in Southeast Asia, you have a large Southeast Asian contingent, and uh, those folks now can, can learn from uh, the, the people that work in the Caribbean or that work in the Red Sea or that work on the, the coast of Africa. And that's interesting. Indonesia is a unique part of our planet because of its geologic history and its oceanographic history. It is essentially a sheltered backwater that evolution has occurred in for millions and millions of years. It, it is called the Coral Triangle. This is kind of the center of diversity uh, for most marine, uh, marine groups including fishes and corals and crustaceans and sponges, etc. Uh, we have uh, over 500 coral species running around in Indonesia, whereas compared to the Caribbean, for example, uh, there's, there's uh, I believe, 80 or some odd species there. So uh, quite a large difference between 80 to 500 and some odd. Fish bombing is a way to cheaply and easily get a lot of fish if there's a big school in the area. And it started after World War II with uh, dynamite. And now they, most fishermen use uh, bottles that they pack with a mixture of fertilizer and kerosene. Uh, and so they pack this mixture in the bottle, put a, a fuse in it, light it, and throw it into a school of fish. Uh, you'll have guys in boats uh, with at least a few with masks or, or goggles on. They'll locate schooling fishes visually, and then they throw an explosive into the school. And uh, when the bomb explodes, it destroys the, the swim bladder and, and basically kills fish, if not stuns them and ruptures their swim bladder. And then they dive to uh, retrieve all of the fish. Uh, that in and of itself is not necessarily a problem, but the big problem is that uh, the bombs typically uh, also destroy the reef framework below. Uh, corals are made out of a calcium carbonate skeleton. The impact of the shock wave breaks them and into small fragments of pieces, and which then uh, are very easily shifted around. If you get uh, a single Coke bottle can do a crater two to three meters in diameter. So this is happening on such a huge scale throughout Indonesia, throughout Southeast Asia, uh, that you have reefs transformed uh, into literally wastelands of rubble, where as far as you look, there's no living coral. It's all that there's been so much blasting. When you talk about how to curb destructive fishing practices, I think that a lot of NGOs and, and various programs, uh, they feel sorry for these people. They say, well, they're these starving fishermen and they're forced into doing that. So the only real thing we can do is, uh, is give them carrots. We have to give them alternative income sources. We have to uh, do uh, maybe pay them directly, that kind of thing. I do agree with those approaches, especially additionally education and awareness campaigns. However, there has to be a stick. Uh, carrots alone don't work because we're dealing with humans. And uh, in all honesty, a lot of the people that are doing this are not poor fishermen. Uh, they're the richest fishermen in their village, and they're getting rich at the expense of everyone else's future, especially the future of uh, the children there. So uh, we in North Sulawesi are really pushing hard on the enforcement side of things as well, uh, so sticks as well as carrots. And uh, one of the things which we're doing is actually charging divers uh, a, a nominal fee, five dollars a person, to pay for the patrols that are supposed to be going on by the police and the rangers. And uh, that's actually really working. We have police and rangers who are actually putting bombers in jail and the communities are highly supportive of that.